Hi, welcome into my studio. Although I'm mostly known for drawing and painting wildlife, I thought I'd do something very different today, a still life of an apple. Okay, so this one's going to be pastel. I've got my pastel matte paper, dark gray. I've got my sketch done on there. The simplest of sketches, basically just a circle, reference photo on the left hand side. And I'm squinting at the photos and using various soft pastels, just put in the major colors and shapes that I can see. Concentrate in a lot as well on the tones or the lightness and the darkness. Now any good quality soft pastels would be uh, sufficient. And I'm using my new uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos for the most part on this drawing. Now once I've got the major uh, colors and tones blocked in, I'm then blending it all with my finger, creating a real soft under painting. Now it's critical that I've used a paper pastel mat here that will take many layers because I am actually going to go over the top in areas with pencil to uh, detail it up a bit more. Now I could of course have just stuck with the um, soft pastels and detailed that or even left a softer look but I'm just trying things out on this uh, still life so I thought I'd do some pencils actually on top for the finer details. So that's basically the main uh, shape and colors done. I'm coming back in now, as you can see, using various different types of pastels to try and get more accuracy in there. So the underlayers acted as my map, as I say on most of my videos, and now I can start to refine that map. It's much easier to see the tonal changes, the lights and the darks, and also the slight color changes that I want as well. Now, although I'm trying to be quite accurate with this drawing, I've changed things a little bit. I've, I've kept the background a little bit more on the cooler side, the bluer side, and on the reference photo, it's got a bit of a, a pinky or purpley tinge to it. So I wanted that to stay cool and the apple itself to be the warm color in this drawing. So now you can see how I'm adding that accuracy, increasing the highlights, putting some orange here and there, just gently blend in with my finger in places. So I don't want it to just be a blended out uh, mass as I'm adding these details. As I'm adding the details, I'm blending less and less. So I'm using a little piece of uh, glassine paper under my hand, stopping major smudges. You can see I'm just going with a little bit of a lighter color on the background. That's gonna make the apple look like it's coming forward and separating it tonally from that background a bit more. So now probably 90% of it is done and quite accurate. I've started to use colored pencils. Now I didn't put too thick a layer down as the base and that's how I'm able to actually put pencils on top. If you go way too thick, especially with soft pastels, it's gonna be much more difficult to start putting details on top with uh, the colored pastel pencils and you would then have to continue using soft pastels to actually get any chance of uh, detailing on top of them. But as you can see here the details are going on pretty well. I want to make sure that I don't have a crisp outline on the edge. I want to keep it fairly soft and that's going to add to the feeling of roundness of the apple rather than a cut out look to it. So here I'm just adding all the small details, all the small little marks, but I don't want to go too crazy on it. I don't want to detail it too much. The whole uh, drawing or painting, however you'd want to call it, took me one hour and 50 minutes from start to finish. So I think you'll agree that's, that's pretty fast. And I was quite surprised how quickly it came together. Notice as well on the highlight, I kept that uh, pretty much pure white straight away. It's gone a little bit um, messy now, a little bit of color have gone into that white, but I made sure I didn't do all the red underneath because I want that highlight to really stand out when I come in with my pure whites. If I had a color underneath, inevitably it's gonna get some sort of mixing in there. So the usual pencils that I'm using for this technique, Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils, Carbothello Pencils as well, the one you can see 
on the screen then with a coloured shaft on there and sometimes occasionally a Caran d'Ache but it's mainly those two brands. Coming in now with the really bright highlight that's going to start to make the apple look reflective and glossy and then a couple of those little fine dots on the surface as well and then it's a case of smaller and smaller bits of refinement. I'm getting that shadow in. It doesn't really show up that well on screen for some reason. I think it's all to do with the way it's, the light is bouncing back into the um, into the camera itself. So in the last couple of minutes that's when I really do as I said all that those tiny little bits of refinement and I make sure I don't rush at this stage. Generally before I do the refining stage I'll get up from my uh, seat at the desk, go and have a drink or something to eat, come back at it really fresh at that stage so that I can concentrate and I'm interested and excited about getting the finishing touches on there rather than have sat for a couple of hours before it, maybe aching, maybe getting a bit tired as well. So I always try to come to the refining stage really fresh. The darker uh, shadow on the bottom that's helping that apple look a bit more three-dimensional. Just a little bit of refinement on the bottom. I'm not going to blend this quite as much. As I said, I didn't want to go too um, detailed on this. It's really more of a study than a finished work. But quite happy how it's turned out just increasing the brightness on the highlight when I want something very very punchy that's when I'm going towards my sticks and softer pastels they'll they'll give you a more punchy uh, white and highlight than you'll get with uh, any of the pencils So just a few more refining touches. Hope you've enjoyed this video. It's only a short one, but I think it's give you a, giving you a nice overview of how I've actually um, drawn this apple. As I said, I'm more well known for wildlife animals. And if you're interested in those, I've got loads and loads of videos now on my YouTube channel, some really long ones on there as well. So as I finish off, using my new pastel stick that's going to give me the darkest dark so you can see I'm just you know putting in the lightest lights at the end and the darkest darks and as I finish off hope you've enjoyed the video hope you found some tips on there and I'll see you all again real soon if you're struggling to draw animals or to improve your art I can share with you the techniques I've learned over 25 years so you can avoid frustration and trial and error and start to enjoy drawing and creating straight away. Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a professional artist and I would love to be your guide on your unique art journey. I've fallen in love with pastels and I'm sure you will too. There's really no other medium that has the vibrancy and color intensity and the ability to put light over dark. That's an absolute game changer for the animal artist. Now on my channel, you get immediate access to hundreds of hours of lessons and demonstrations and you go completely at your own pace. There is absolutely no rushing in my art channel and lessons. Think of it like a video library. You pick the video you like, something that really takes your fancy, and you take as long as you want to complete it. Or alternatively, you can watch my videos, learn the techniques, and apply them to the subjects that really inspire you. And you also get new reference photos each month. They're copyright free. You can use them in your art, sell your art, no worries whatsoever. Many of my artists came to me with little to no art ability whatsoever and they're truly amazed with what they're now creating. You could be doing that as well. Now don't think age is a problem. You're really never too old to start learning and enjoying art. And many of my students are 40, 50, 60, 70, even 80 years of age. Now my channel is about much more than lessons and techniques. You also get access to my secret private Facebook group and that's full of members that's literally grown up with my channel. 
they're super supportive and kind they come from all over the world so if you've got any questions you can rest assured there's going to be someone there really quick with a solution to your problems now with my channel you're not tied into any contract you can literally come and go as you please you can go up tiers you can go down tiers whatever you want and there's a tier and a price to suit literally any pocket now i've been doing art lessons for many many years and i really pride myself on trying to create the absolute best lessons and demonstrations i possibly can I really hope to see you there soon so you can start your art journey and I can't wait to see what you can achieve.